Hey guys, this is Eve Scrapbooking with me, and I'm going to play a little bit more with our Distress Oxide inks today. I know I had lots and lots of questions about them the other day when I posted that intro video, but I just wanted to show you, I'm going to make a card today. So this is one of our new Tim Holtz stencils, and this one's called Roses, if you want to look for that. Let me find it here. There you go. And I will link that directly below. So I'm going to use this stencil and some black cardstock. And I have just cut this at uh, 4 inches by 5 and a quarter. So I'm going to ink up a little bit of this. And I don't want to have those lines on the side of it, so I'm just kind of trying to play around with it, too. And I just have a notepad under here just so I don't get ink everywhere. Because I'm real good about that. We're going to use some fired brick. And I also do use different uh, little pads for my oxide inks versus my other ink. Someone asked that. Yes, I do. I keep these underneath the ink pads. Just put you a little piece of Velcro under there and stick them underneath the ink pad. So we're going to go in here on some of these flowers and put some of this fired brick. Now when you have an intricate stencil you don't want to rub it back and forth because it can bend the little pieces on the stencil up so just kind of press it down and twist it a little bit back and forth that'll keep it from bending so then we're going to use some peeled paint i think love this color use that on the leaves Now you could also use your finger daubers on this if you wanted to get the little uh, pieces in there and not get ink everywhere. That would be nice. You could do that. I'm not going to worry about it right now. If I get a little bit of green on a little bit of fire brick, that's fine with me. Okay, so let's look at that and see what we've got. Oh, I like. The only thing is I did get a little bit of overage right there just because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, but I can cover that up. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to put this flower, I think I'm going to put another flower right here to kind of cover that. Again, I'm going to use the fired brick. And I'm going to go right on off the page so that and then I'm going to do this one down here, too. So let's see. Oh, yeah. That looks a lot better. I've covered those spaces up there, so I like that. And then I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to put a flower right there, but I also want to get some leaves in there as well. <coughs> See, we've got the start of a flower right there, so let's do that. Okay, then let's get a little bit of these leaves down here.
Okay. Oh, I like that. That's cute. I love that. I want to put something right here, though. I feel like that's kind of naked up there. So let's do another part of a flower there. Let's just do it going off the page. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I absolutely love that. So we're going to sit that aside and let that dry. And then what I have is I have this Technique Tuesday stamp and this is new, brand new and it is called Inspired Dragonfly. I will link that directly below as well. And I'm going to use the sentiment, life is better when you are laughing. I love that. And I'm just going to show you how easy this does stamp. I'm going to use a tan card base. So I'm going to stamp this sentiment on tan. Make sure I've got it in the right place. Oh yeah, that will be fine. And I'm just going to use my fired brick to ink this up. I'm using my small misty. Now when you're using these inks on a stamp, don't twist. Just go straight up and down because these ink pads are very soft. And this is an oxide ink, so if you twist, you're going to get more ink than you want in splotches. Oh, that stamped really good. Look at that. Love that. Okay. Now let's take this off. And I think I'm just going to do a little fishtail on there maybe. I think I might trim it off just a little. So I'm off camera just trimming it down just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, now to do my fishtail, I just go to the center and just cut a little slit up and then go to the side cut that one out and then go to the other side at the point and just come straight in and cut that one out just like that okay so there's our little fish tail and now we're going to ink around the edges and yes you can use this as an edge ink you can ink your edges with this see it makes it look really pretty okay so we're going to lay that aside, and now I have cut a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches by, let's see, four and a quarter, and we're just going to score that in the center. So we're going to score it at five and a half. Okay, and I'm going to go around the edges with some peel paint. Just to finish those off a little bit. I like that. Now, I want you to look at the different color. This is the same ink. This is the fired brick, and this is the fired brick. Look at the different color on the different cardstock. So that doesn't match that at all, does it? <laughs> so I am going to have to use a different uh, ink. Let's see. Let's try. Let's try crack pistachio and see if what color we get on that tan. That is the thing with these inks. You're going to get with different cardstocks you're going to get different colors so that's the same fired brick as that it's just a different cardstock so let's look and see what we'll get on this one Let's use cracked pistachio and see what we get. I like it and it will match, 
but I don't think it's quite bold enough. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ink it up again. I'm going to show you what I think I'm going to do. We're going to try this anyway. Like I said, this is, I'm trying trial and error just like everybody else does. So let's do this. Okay, now while that is still good and wet, I'm going to take my, this is Nouveau Embossing Powder. I'm going to take this embossing powder. I'm going to sprinkle it on here while that's still good and wet. And I didn't put my embossing buddy down because I didn't know I was going to do this. So let's hope it doesn't stick all over the place. And it doesn't. Look at that. Okay, I think that might work. Let's heat emboss this and see what we get. Now this is going to be kind of loud because I'm using my pink gun because the Tim Holtz gun to me just doesn't get hot enough to set this quick. So first off you need to heat up your heat gun. Make sure it's good and hot before you go to your paper. And then just go to the paper and let's see what we get. Keep it moving so it doesn't warp your paper. Oh look at that. I like that. It almost looks like a crackle effect. Look at that. I like that. Okay, so now you know that you can emboss over these and you get something that looks kind of like a crackle effect. So I like that part. So let's put that back in there before I make a big mess. Okay, while that's cooling off, I think we're going to try one other thing. Since, since that worked, I like how that looked. I'm going to use this stencil. And I'm going to put down some of this fired brick. For this rose. I'm just using a scrap piece of cardstock. Now, while that is very, very wet, we're going to go in here and put some embossing powder on here and see what we get. Now, I didn't mask it off, so you know I've got some embossing powder where I don't want, so I'm just going to take a little brush, brush that off. Now, as you can see, it's very, there you go, it's kind of crackly looking. Crackly. I don't think that's a word. Crackle? Crackle looking? So let's heat that and see what we get. I don't like that look. Let's see if it'll focus in on it so you can see the effects. Focus. There we go. Look at that. It looks just like a crackle paint. I am liking that. Look at that. That would be good on a lot of different things. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to cut that flower out and put it on our card. So let me put this back in here. Like I said, I will have all of these linked below. And I use my little lint tool to clean up any residue that's left around. Okay, so this is dry. So let's go ahead and cut this out. I'm going to cut this off on the back. Okay, and just because I got a little crazy with my stencil and got some places on here that I really didn't want to get... I'm going to use my little stencil brush, and good news, the Clarity stencil brushes, we are going to get them next week, so I will link those below too. This is not a Clarity. The Clarity are the long ones. They're a lot better than this. Um, I will link those below too, so if you want some, get them. They're, they come for to a set. But I'm just going to use the peel paint, put a little bit on my brush, and I'm going to start off the paper. And I'm just going to brush it on here. 
I'm going to try to brush in one direction because I want that grid of the paper to show. Oh, I like that. I'm going to show you. Do you see how it pulled that texture of the paper up? I love that. And it covered up my mistake. Very, very cute. Okay. I like that. I think that is good. So we will go ahead and put our card together. And I'm just going to use some ATG. Someone also asked me, could you brush this oxide ink on? So, there is your answer. You can, and it's very, very nice. <sighs> I got a little bit of glitter on there. Alright, we'll put that down. And I think I'm going to put that right there. And then there's my flower that we did. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love that. So all I'm going to do is, I'm thinking I want to put it, I'll probably just put it over the top of that one. Just like that. This is going to be a very, very simple card. Just to a friend of mine. So I think I'm going to put that up on Pop Dots. Well, on Pop Dot material. I'm still using my Pop Dot material. You're trying to use it up. I don't waste anything. I'm terrible. Well, I guess that's good, but my husband calls me too frugal. Okay, so there is that. I'm going to curl the ends of that up just a little bit. I don't think I got that straight. There we go. And then I'm going to pop this little flower up too. And just because the rest of our card is looking kind of plain up through here, I'm going to take my white gel pen, and this is the Sakura Uniball. And hopefully I won't be messing this up, but I'm going to go around it just to bring in some of that white. And I hope my ink is dry because I don't want to mess my pen up. I'm going to put some stitch marks. Just around my card. Oh yeah, I think that brought it out much, much better. It brought this white up to the top and brought everything together. I love that card. It's not complicated. It's a simple card, but it is oh so pretty. Let me show you a close-up. Love the effect that that brush put on there. Absolutely am in love with that. I have got lots of things running through my mind that we can use that for. And then there's our other embossing. Okay guys, that is it today on using our Distress Oxide inks. The more I play with these, the more I absolutely love them, the more uses I can find for them. So if you're interested in any of these products that I use today, just check the link below. I will have them linked directly. And you can go over and purchase them yourself. We will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.